some potential new stats for the Type 10 has been leaked and today we're going to compare them to the Type 9, have a look at them and see how the two ships stack up. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. A commander recently posted some um, data mined information about the Type 10, meaning that he somehow pulled it out of the game client. Um, this was posted anon anonymously. Um, and we're going to have a look at some of these stats today. But before we do that, I just want to say that this is, of course, very, very early. I mean, we... This is not even beta level yet. So so all these stats that you see here are subject to change and we cannot be sure that this is not even this is even close to the um to the finished version of the ship. And so a lot of things can change. But regardless, it can give us some information about what direction Frontier is probably going with the ship. So let's start by having a look at the core internals. And here we can see which class modules it will be able to fit in the core internals. Now most notably, of course, the power plant that gets upgraded from a class 6 to a class 8, if you go compare the type 9 to the type 10, of course. So this means this thing will be able to fit some very, very power hungry modules. Um, and we'll see where it else can use some, this power, because there are lots of places where you're going to need the power uh, in this ship. And I think that struck me as interesting is the thrusters have not been upgraded, because the pictures we have seen, it seems like like the Type 10 has plenty of thrusters, uh, at least on the model. Um, but when you do a size comparison of the two ships, the Type 10 is actually slightly narrower than the Type 9. Um, so the thrusters are also smaller. So I guess it's just, oh, sorry, it's just a question of having more but smaller engines. So I would expect we have to see the thrust um, capabilities kind of the same. Um, which surprised me a bit if this is going to be, I mean, with the big power plant, you would expect it to be handling itself in combat. But if you don't really have the maneuverability from the thrusters, well, but, hey, I don't have any stats on the mass of the ship. So we will have to wait and see. But at least thrusters are not upgraded. But the frameshift drive do get a bump up from a class 6 to a class 7. Absolutely wonderful. If we assume that it's not going to be much heavier than the Type 9 Heavy, that means that... Um, and the Type 10 should be able to get a very, very respectable jump range, um, making it a very good trade ship, but potentially also a very good ship if you want to um, to get it down to the Pleiades sector and use it down there. But uh, we'll look at that later. So the rest of the core internals are pretty much the same. Well, they're actually exactly the same. So not much there. Same power distributor, same, same sensors, fuel tanks, the same. Um, again, same size fuel tank, larger... Um, Larger frame shift drive, so you might want to fit a fuel scoop. Um, but anyway, let's uh, move on to the optional internals. Now, in the data that we have, the optional internal layout are exactly the same as the Type 9. Um, this is an area where I would expect it to be updated later. I would be surprised if this ship um, is introduced into the game with the exact same internal layout as the Type 9. So we're most likely going to see some switching around in here. But um, for now, the layout is exactly the same. So, um, and if this is, if they actually want to keep it the same, they want to keep it as an upgraded Type 9 that just has a, they cramped it a bigger power plant than a bigger frame shift drive. Um, and then keep the internal layout the same. Well, then we know it's going to be a capable trader, same cargo capacity. But now with that upgraded power plant, of course, you can now actually fit this for some. Um, some combat if you want and use that class 8 for a uh, for a decent shield generator and still have enough um, enough power left for everything else. Now talking about everything else let's uh, have a very quick look at the utility mounts. You can see here it gets a bump up as well from 4 utility mounts on the type 9 up to the 8 utility mounts on the type 10. So again all the way up there with some of the bigger ships um, with all 8 utility mounts in use. So again interesting to see that this is uh, is getting more utility focused again maybe we're gonna have to use some of those for shield boosters to get um, to get our shields up if this is going to be a combat oriented ship um and of course i've saved the best for last the hard points look at this this is absolutely insane look at this it has four four large hard points it has three medium hard points and it has two small hard points. 
that's a total of what, nine? Nine hard points? This is going to make this ship the highest potential firepower in the game. This is, if this is correct, this means that this ship will have the highest firepower in, in the game. That's, I mean, that's significant if this is true. No huge hard points, fair enough, but the four large hard points is going to dish out so much damage. And if you're going to use this for, for instance, hunting Thargoids, because right now these weapons are only available in medium size and up, that actually means that you're going to be able to fit seven different AX type weapons. And since we know this is going to be a multi-crew ship, it's most likely going to be able to fit a fighter as well. So with, with seven different modules, you're going to have, this is going to be a fortress in its own because of the very, very respectable number of, uh, of optional internal slots as we saw before. You can get some decent armor out of this. The jump range is good, so you can easily get it down there. Um, it has the power to fit weapons, to fit a good shield. Um, where it's really lacking, I, I fear, would be in the maneuverability department. But again, it is a, a upgraded version of the Type 9, at least if, if that's what it's going to be in the current, um, in the current state of the data here. I just want to add a quick note here that I forgot to mention during the original recording of this video. And that is that even though the ship does have a very respectable um, hardpoint layout and has the potential to do a lot of damage, it is of course in the current state lacking a lot of distributing power. I mean that grade 6 is going to really really hold the ship back. Just for comparison, the uh, Anaconda has a grade 8, which is two grades higher. So that means even though you have all these hard points, if you're planning to use all of them at once, um, you probably are going to have to run all multi cannons or something that's not pulling a lot of distributing power draw. So this ship here would be ideal for a situation where you would switch your weapons around a lot like hunting Thargoids, where you would have some stations where you'd be firing missiles and you would only be firing your missile sl slots. Some situations you want to fire your um, multi-cannons when you have to damage the hearts. And other situations you want to just fight uh, with your flak cannons if you want to try to take down the swarm. So because it has all these hard points but not enough energy to actually fire all of them once. Uh, if this is the correct stats, they might be changed, of course, but if they are, this is, I think, a way for Frontier to balance the ship to prevent it from being an, an overpowered combat um, ship by allowing it to have very little distributing power draw. You can use small groups of weapons at a time. Um, and with recent announcement of large weapons, that fits nicely into the, the, the theory that this weapon, this ship is going to be a very, very effective Fargoid Hunter. Um, funny that they decide to base that off a, a Type 9, but again, um, we will have to wait and see. I, I cannot stress enough that these stats are not final. They have not been confirmed by Frontier or anything, um, but we will, again, we'll have to wait and see what uh, what comes up. But let me know in the description, not description, in the comment section down below, what you think of, of a ship like this. How would you fit it? What are the strong sides? What are the weak sides? Is there something I missed? Um, but anyway... Remember also, guys, to subscribe to the channel so you will get the latest updates whenever new information is, um, is out about the, both this ship but all, all the other changes coming to the game in the near future. Um, but anyway, I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the info icon up here. Just above me, there's a video that you might find interesting as well. And if you want to support the channel more directly, there is over there a link to my Patreon page where you can go and you can support the channels so I can make the content even better for you guys. Thanks a lot for watching and also next time I'll see you guys in space.